Holidays are interesting times, aren't they? Um, we are meant to be uh, so filled with celebration, and we've got this wonderful table here of, I notice the carrots are definitely real, I think. You might want to not eat them, but... Uh, and uh, you gather with your, your family and your home, and it's meant to be such a time of great joy, and of course it is, it is. Uh, but at the same, in the same regard, in the same way, every season of holiday, we're reminded. It's, it's almost as if we were there just yesterday. Do you get that feeling? It's like when it's Christmas, it feels like it was just yesterday it was Christmas again. And when it's Thanksgiving, it feels like it's just, just yesterday. Of course, for me, Thanksgiving is not, is not something we celebrate in England. It's because we're very, very ungrateful people. <laughs> uh, and, but we've had to get used uh, to it as a family, Thanksgiving, and we enjoy it. We enjoy it very much. And uh, it has a great history to it, doesn't it, Thanksgiving? Uh, Plymouth, 1621, and um, I suppose some people say it's the first Thanksgiving, though apparently there's an argument about whether it really is or not. But of course, Thanksgiving goes back beyond that. It goes really back to the Bible. And it is the first and primary response of a human soul when God is at work. Thanksgiving, wow. And that's why it's baked into some of the, the greatest traditions in this country, Thanksgiving. 1789, George Washington, his famous Thanksgiving proclamation. And uh, he, he said then in that proclamation that the purpose of it was that we would then all unite uh, to humbly and sincerely give thanks. Give thanks to who? To the Almighty. Of course, that's the key, isn't it? It's one thing to say, let's, let's be thankful, but unless you really have something to be thankful about, you're not going to feel thankful. In the end, it all comes down to thankfulness to Him. I want to tell you a quick story. I'm not going to go on very long uh, this evening, but I want to tell you a quick story. I've called it a prodigal thanksgiving. And you'll recognize the story. Two uh, sons, and uh, let's call them Fred and Harry. Harry is um, boisterous, and Fred is equally boisterous, and they're always getting into a fight, uh, Fred and Harry. As they grow up, Fred decides he wants to see the big city lights. They grew up on a farm. He goes to his father and he says, look, Dad, I've heard that, you know, there's this thing called a will, and when you die, I'm going to get half the inheritance because, you know, Harry's going to get the other half, and so can I have the money now, and then I can go off and have some fun? And, of course, that's an extraordinarily rude thing to say to your father because basically what you're saying is, I kind of wish you were dead. But the father's very gracious, and he allows Fred to take the money off and Fred goes off into far distant country and he, he spends the money. He has a great time. He has lots of parties. But eventually he, the money runs out. And when the money runs out, his friends, his friends run out too. And he's left alone. And he becomes so hungry that he, he, he even starts to rummage in the trash cans outside the drive through McDonald's to eat the half-eaten Big Macs. And one day when he's doing that, he looks at himself in, in, in the window of the, the McDonald's as it shine, reflects back his face and sees his unshaven face and a bit of sort of half-eaten Big Mac down his, down his chin. And he says to himself, this is ridiculous. You know, even, even back on the farm, one of the, one of the staff guys, one of the, 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 the seasonal workers, even, even one of those guys, even the crop pickers, even, the sh sh even, the share share cro even those guys, even they were were better off than I am. I'm just going to go home and say to Dad, look, Dad, just hire me on. And so he goes home. And uh, his father uh, happens to be looking out his window, and there's a long pathway up to the farm, and he sees him walking, his son walking down the path, and the father gets up, and he runs to the son, and he hugs him, and he embraces him. 
He won't even let the apology get fully formed out of his, out of his son's mouth. He says, no, 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 you're, you, you, know, I, you were dead, but now you're alive. You were lost, but now you're found. Let's kill the fatted calf. You know, I don't know what the equivalent of that would be today, but let's have a big, big turkey. <laughs> and they have the greatest thanksgiving because they have something to be thankful about. He was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. The family, the family is together. The older brother, Harry, is not so much together. He's deeply angry. He'd been the good boy. Where's my party? And the father says to him, look, you've got to understand. He was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. Come and celebrate. And as Jesus tells the story, often called the prodigal son story, it's left on a cliffhanger because you don't know whether the, whether the older son's actually going to join in the party or not. And the reason for that is because it's an invitation. It's called the prodigal son because prodigal means a couple of different things. The word prodigal in English means wasteful. And that younger son wasted all that money. So he was prodigal in that sense. He wasted his opportunities. He's prodigal in that sense. But prodigal also means exuberant, lavish. And the father, in Middle Eastern culture, the father would never run in public. And yet he runs and gives him a hug. And he, it's a costly love. It's a lavish love. It's an exuberant love. It's a generous love. It's an extraordinary love. It's a prodigal love. And he embraces the son. But there's another way in which it's prodigal too. It's that party that they have. That Thanksgiving is a prodigal Thanksgiving. It's lavish. It's the best food. It's an extraordinary party. Why? Because he's dead, but now he's alive. He's lost, but now he's found. See, that's the kind of thanksgiving that you can have. I, I don't know whether you, you know Jesus or not, but you can know him even this evening and have a reason for giving thanks. Maybe you've wandered away a little bit. You could be welcomed in again and be a part of this family and a part of your family. That We were praying earlier in the, in the back room. The pastors and the directors were praying. One of the things we we're praying about is that there could be families here that need healing. That God could heal families even tonight. He can do it if you let him, if you come home, if you ask for his help. And he has such a reason to give thanks. A prodigal thanksgiving. Lavish love of God. And therefore, <laughs> a prodigal party too. Lavish, exuberant thanksgiving. We as our family do that a couple of different ways. One way we do it is we always get out a list of reasons that we have to be thankful for, things that God has done in our lives over the last couple of years, and we read them out to each other. But above the little things is the massive thing that God in his love has redeemed you if you're his. And if you come to him, he will embrace you in his loving arms. Oh, I wish that you would have a prodigal Thanksgiving this year. Let's pray together. Our Lord God, we do pray that this Thanksgiving would be lavish and joyful. And I pray, Lord, that by your Spirit you'd stir up that spirit of Thanksgiving in each of our hearts tonight because of what you have done in your prodigal love for us, your lavish, exuberant, amazing love. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.